We can't talk about everybody today because I'm, I'm going to have to post this one. I didn't post the last one, but we're going to post this one. We talked we talk too much junk the other day. All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and talk about what we talked about the other day. Was these scores. Oh, I know. When you're given, and let's just pull up our handy dandy Excel spreadsheet. When you're given data, there's one more thing that you can find besides what we've been finding. And that's the five number summary and box plot. So let's say, let's do X and let's do just some numbers. 70, 72, 75, 78, 80, 85, 92, 95, and 98, and 102. Let's see how many that is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's put in 11 and make it a 65. Okay, go ahead and find all the information you need to find on those numbers. Of course, that means mean, median, mode, range, mid-range, variance, standard deviation. Go ahead and draw a curve, which means you've got to add the standard deviation on the right, subtract it on the left, and then we'll go into a five-number summary and a box plot. And that will pretty much cover all the material that we need to cover because I've already covered z-scores and empirical rule. But I know we're going to go back over that with the questions that you send me. So we'll have at least two or three more of those in your notebook before the test starts next week. So go ahead and, oops, sorry. I don't know how I did that. Press that back button, top left. Yeah, the best, that's the best key on any program is the undo button mm -hmm. because we screw up so much. Okay. I'll make them a little bit bigger. So what you said, mean, medium, mode, Range, mid-range, variance, standard deviation. Give y'all about two minutes to do all that, and then we'll go from there. If you can't do it, just mark it up as what? Failure.
car that was up there decided to pop it in the car. I don't know what happened to it. Oh my God. Thank you. Can you leave it out? Half of you going to want to leave it out, and half of you want to put it in. I'm going to put it back in. Because no matter what I do, y'all going to get mad. So. See? Told you. I'm trying, to set you up. I'm trying to set you up for failure. Mm. Told you. Big square root is standard deviation, right? Yes. No. Square root of the variance. I ought to tell people to put that in a notebook so they can refer to it every once in a while. What would that be called? Notes. Notes. Yeah. You're welcome. Anything to piss you off. What? Yeah, I know. A little spice, you know, a little aggressiveness, anger, never hurt anything. What did she say? I said a little. I didn't say that gum beating out the headlights with a bat. I got everything up there that we're going to do. Uh, let me go ahead and put one more thing up there just to aggravate y'all. That number. That number plus that number F4. And move that over here. And equals this number minus that number. F4. And I go into <clears throat> and we can make this right here, make that yellow, make that yellow. And make that yellow. I mean, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the middle is going to be right there. One, two, three, <coughs> four. There's, let's see, what it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five. That should be that should be the median. There we go. Then I'll make that kind of a gray. That'll be that. And the max. Make that kind of a green, and that's equal to that number, and equals that number, and that's equal to that number. All right, so y'all about finished? Bothers you that her computer has a sticker on it? That's my computer.
That's yours. That's my computer. She borrowed in your computer. Yeah, we'll check out and change papers. So now it's just. <laughs> Y'all are confusing. Twitch, that's good too. A that little bit of that doesn't hurt. A little bit. All depends on if you like chocolate or vanilla. Spicy or not spicy. All right. <clears throat> you ready? Here we go. I love jalapeno jelly. Have you ever had jalapeno jelly or green pepper jelly? You have the you have the you have the hotness of the jalapeno in with the jelly. It's what? It is. It is. Huh? Y'all ever tried it? No. So y'all suffer from redneck disorder. I've never tried it, so it's yucky. That's redneck disorder. That's Hubert's. I used to suffer from that big time. Got to try things. It's real good. It's called green pepper jelly. I like the best. I like green pepper jelly. Do you not put it underneath like cream cheese? Oh, gosh, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Cream cheese and jalapeno jelly. Mm, that's good. It's kind of like putting hot sauce on a banana. It's good. <laughs> Have you tried it? No. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Some people put, okay, same concept. Some people take a French fry and put it in ice cream. No, that looks good. That's good. With Wendy's? Like All right. Well, try, then. I'm going to try the hot sauce. Okay. okay. So you got something sweet and you got something hot. Okay. Something salty, something sweet. You put it. Why is it such outrageous to put hot sauce on a banana? It's not. That's just the first I've heard of it. That sounds like something my brother would do. You are judging me. My brother can eat an entire jar of the sliced jalapenos, the pickled jalapenos. I see. I don't. Drink the juice. Okay. That to me, to me, destroying your mouth so you can't taste anything. No. That to me, that's. Yeah, I'm not about it. Either. I'm not about that. No. I mean, spicy is good, but destroying your taste buds, no. Where you can't taste anything for 30 minutes, I don't understand that. All right, I'll shut up. All right, here we go. I'm going to divide by what? How many we got? Didn't I say 11? There's your mean. Oh, well. Let me do it again. It's not cooperating. It's not my fault, of course. It's the Russians' fault. No coughing in class, please. All right, mode. I don't care. But does anything show up the most? No. Nope. Good, so put in a. I usually put in a range is what 37. your highest minus your what yeah. lowest mid range is equal to the highest plus what the lowest. the lowest. I'm trying to teach people, I'm not trying to, you know, yeah, I'm trying to teach people, so y'all got to bear with me. Divided by what two. And the variance. We've got to do x minus x bar. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do x minus x bar, which is going to be equal to this number minus this number. And I'm going to hit F4. And I'm also going to change all this to five decimal places. Why am I going to do that? None of those numbers you can make positive. You're going to add those negatives to the positive. you got to make it positive when you square it. That's why you square it. I think I went over that. You need to put that in a notebook and then go back and forth to where you can, you know. All right. Five decimal places. Why am I taking it five? Because I'm a nerd? Because you want to round what? At the very what? And thank you for your participation. Everybody with me? Yes. Good. I'm going to take these two out right here, try to get some more room. There we go. Yes. 
still running out of room there now I'm gonna copy that down and check your numbers and now the, the formula says X minus X bar quantity what I'm not I'm asking y'all to interact with me thank you I know y'all hate me but God, at least you can answer yes or no or you know I'm gonna have to go out and put smokestacks on my truck so I feel good about myself equals this raised to the what power shouldn't be taking it out to that much why is it doing that I only want five digits change that again format sales five digits why is it taking that to Huh. Why did it do that? There we go. All right, copy that down. And then what are we going to do with all those numbers? Add them up. Add them up. And then I'm going to just hit sum. And that is your numerator of your variance. So I go over here and I hit equals this number. Divided by, what's 11 minus 1? 10. 10. <clears throat> and there's those numbers. Now I take the square root of that, which means I raise that to the 1 half power. So that's equal to this number raised to the 0.5 power. And that's my mean and my standard deviation. Of course, you take the mean and the standard deviation, and what do you do with it? You put the mean in the middle, and you add <coughs> the standard deviation to the right, and you subtract it on the left. Oh my gosh. Really? I've done, done this like three times. Well, why I got to keep doing it? I'm doing the whole page. Don't ask me. I don't know. Question. Okay, now I'm going to jump off of this right quick and pull up my whiteboard. And we're going to talk about five number summary. Before I go into the five number summary, we got to make sure we understand how to read the handy dandy curve because that's where the five number summary comes from. So read your curve kind of like a Kind of like a uh, fuel gauge. So everybody, fuel gauge on this end means what? Empty. Empty, which means zero percent. And then right in here, you got about what? So that's your first what? Your first quartile. What does a quarter mean anyway? Quarter. What does a quarter mean? 25 cents on a dollar, right? 25 percent of a dollar, right? So your first quartile is also your 25th what? <coughs> no coffin. So at that point, you're talking about 25 percent. Now I'm just drawing this. It's not exactly, but I'm trying to get you to see what we're actually looking at when you're talking about the first percentile, the first quartile, which is equal to the 25th percentile. It's the same thing. All right. So what would this be? Half, which means 50th what? Percentile. And what? The second what? 
Quartile. Good. You've made the relationship. Thank you. Quartile. And it's also the median. Write that down. It's also the median. In the five number summary, the median is the second quartile. We're talking about five number summary. I'm not talking about your bell curve. I'm talking about the five number summary. Now, if this is 25th percentile and this is the 50th percentile, then by law of deduction, what do you think this one is? 75th percentile, or the third what? Quartile. And of course, this is full, which means 100%. So when you're when 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 you're told this is the 25th percentile, that means that you're in the 25th percentile. That means that below you is 25%. That means above you is what? 75%. So you're in the 25th percentile. If you are told you're in the 90th percentile or the 75th percentile, that means below you is 75% of the population and above you is what? 25% of the population. So that's what percentiles means. The five number summary is going to be your men. your 25th percentile, your median, your 75th percentile, and your 100th, which is the what? Max. Okay, that. Well, how do you find the 25th and the 75th? That's what I'm going to show you. It's real easy. It's the median of the median of the median. You just keep taking the median of the median of the median. It's called interpolation. Same thing with the midpoint. Take the midpoint of the midpoint or the mid-range of the mid-range of the mid-range. Keep you in the middle of the middle of the middle. So we're going to get to that now. So as you, if, is you, if you look on the spreadsheet, I've already got it listed here. Men is what? Zero. Sixty-five. The men is the least of your data, okay? And that's the what? 65. The max is what? 102. Or 102, depending on where you're from. And the median is 80. So you've already got three numbers. So if you miss three numbers on the five numbers summary, don't what? Don't tell anybody. Because all you got to do is rewrite the number. So how do you find the first quartile and the third quartile? Well, I'm going to put a dot in the middle. That means the median, right? I'm going to put a dot. I'm going to put this red dot in the middle. Boop, right there. How many numbers are above that red dot? How many? Is five odd or even? So you just pick the middle number just like the median of the median. <coughs> so I'm going to highlight. Let's see, that number right there. And we're going to color that blue. No, that's really more of a violet. Mm. Well, we'll have to go with it. And that is that number right there. And that's equal to that number. So what is the 25th? I meant the, that's supposed to, I'm supposed to change those. I'm sorry. I suck. That's supposed to be the 50th. What are y'all talking about? Um, um, she has beautiful drawing skills. My what? She has beautiful drawing skills. Mm. Yes, okay. So what's the 75th percentile? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B95. No. Remember, N, when, N is, when N is odd, what do you do? You pick the middle number. When N is even, you do what? You average the two middle numbers. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
Five is odd, so you just pick that number. Pick the middle number, and we'll color that mm, that burnt yuck color. That'll be that color. So we're not including the median. So what I say? I said this is the middle. I said how many numbers are above it? How many numbers are below it? Five. You go with that. You don't include. So that's equal to that number. And now you have your five number summary. Okay, this thing's getting on my nerves. Hold on a minute. Got to reinvent the wheel here. There. Now, how do you draw a box plot? Well, I want you to write down two things right now. Well, besides how to how to draw a box plot and underline it. Okay. How to draw a box plot, underline. Number one, you draw a number line. Number two, you draw the box plot on or above the number line. That's how you draw a box plot. Now, how do you make the number line? Well, the number line consists of two things. It consists of the minimum, the maximum, and the mid-range. That's your number line. So I'm going to get on here, and I'm going to draw a box plot. Draw my... Min is what? 65, 102, and my mid range is what? 83. And now I'm going to have to use what's called interpolation. Interpolation is when you take the middle of the middle of the middle of the middle. In other words, just like we did the mean of the mean, I mean the median of the median of the median. Well, I'm going to find the middle of the middle of the middle, or the mid-range of the mid-range of the mid-range. So what's 65 plus 83? <clears throat> 20. Should be 140, what? 148? Yeah. Yes. Okay, what's half of 148? 74? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> what's 83 plus 102? 185. All right, what's 185? What's half of 185? 62.5? Or not 62. 92.5 yeah, well. or 93. Close enough for government work. Now take the middle of the middle. <clears throat> 65 to 74 is what? 9, half of 9 is 4.5. So that'd be 5. So that'd be 70 ish, 69 ish, whatever. So just add 5, so that'd be 75, or I'm sorry, 5 to 79. Add 5 would be 88. Add 5 to be 98. Everybody with me? So you make your number line. You can divide it up to however many marks you want. It's called graduations. Remember size class? Graduate cylinder has marks on the side of it. All right. You graduate your number line however and how many you want. You Divide it up into 15 little hash marks if you want to. All right, you can divide it up into five. I don't care. However you need, however, however many you need what? I'd change this, it'd be 67. This would be 73. This would be 77. This would be what? 81. This would be 80, 85. This would be whatever, 95, and so on. Just keep taking a half and a half and a half. And eventually, you'll have so many marks, you won't even be able to read it. Okay, so you, you decide when you need to stop. Okay, now I draw my number line. Well, so what? where's my box plot? Well, if I've used this and this on my number line, then what do you think my box plot is? There's three in a box. There you go. So I'm going to take my handy-dandy purple pen, if I have a purple pen, and I'll just use this magenta. And the first quartile, I'll circle it in magenta so you know which one it corresponds to, <coughs> is 72. 72, will I be, will I be done?
70 to 74 is half to 72. So I'm going to just put it right here. And then I've got an orange. Orange, I'm going to put orange. And that orange is 95. Well, 90 plus 5, half of 5 is 2.5, so that'd be right in there. And then my other, my median, which is the most important part of the five number summary, is yellow. And it's what? 80? 80 is right there. So I take my black marker and I draw my box. And there is your box plot. Now you can draw it above the number line or you can draw it on the number line. Now, what is that telling us? Well, what is the most important number or the important position in statistics? In statistics, the most important number is representative of the middle. Everything is compared to the what? The middle. In this case, the middle is the mid-range. The mid-range is your most accurate. That's right here is your most accurate calculated, meaning your most accurate mathematical calculation to the middle. Doesn't take in weight. It just takes in your min and your max, and you divide it by two. That's the most accurate calculation of the middle. Okay? Mathematical calculation. Other calculations are statistical, meaning that you, you know, you do the mean and the median. Those are statistical. But the mathematical calculation, the closest thing to the middle is the mid-range. Now, now you're going to compare everything to the mid-range. The mid-range is what? 83. There's your mid-range right there. You're going to compare it. So it looks like to me that the mean is what? To the left of the mid-range. So that means most of your data is on the left. If most of your data is on the left, then that means it's skewed what? Right. Skewed right. So your data here is a little bit skewed right because your mean is to the left. I mean, your median is to the left of what? The middle. Well, let's look at the mean, 82. 82 is a little bit closer, all right, but it's still to the left. So when you see the median to the left of the middle, that means that your data is a little bit skewed right. That means the raw data right here, your raw data. And that's how you do a five number summary. Now, let's change it one bit and add one number. You add one number, it changes everything. So I want you to rewrite this group of data and I want you to put another line in. In fact, let me just do this. I'm going to erase it. No, I no, better not do that. I'm just going to copy. Well, let me just go down here and make another set of data. How about that? Because I didn't color this up and I don't want to, I don't want to have to change all my colors. So I'm just going to go down here and we're going to do like ages or something. X. I mean, it was at 11, so I want to do 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to put uh, 45, 44, uh, 40, 40, 39, 32, 30, 29, <coughs> 18, 18, 17. All right? So there's your data. Go ahead and start doing everything. Take a minute and find the mean, median, mode. It should be 12 up there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep.
Joshua case. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything while y'all are working. Mean, median, mode, range, mid range, variance, standard deviation. I'm just going to go down here and put five number, summary, min, first, second, I'm hungry, third, and max. Now you also need to look in your book, and somebody, if you got a book, look in it around where you're talking about the box plot and see if they talk about an interquartile range. I think that's where you take the first quartile and you subtract the third quartile. But I don't usually cover that because I think most of y'all can read where it says take your first quartile and subtract your what? Third quartile, I think y'all can figure that out. Um, I don't use the quartile range that much. So, but it may ask you that to find the outliers. So we'll have to see when y'all send me homework questions if it asks about the interquartile range. I can't remember if it's the 120 or the 109, 103 that asked that. One of y'all, one of the two ask it, the other one doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and do the min. I'll do that for you. I'll calculate the max for you also. There. I did that much for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Summation of all these numbers divided by, is it 12? There's that. How many numbers do we have? Twelve. So I got to count down to number five. One, two, three, four, five. And highlight the what? Middle two, correct? And highlight them. And that is your mean. But there's two numbers. Yep. Yeah. You have to what? You have to average them. So that's equal to, parentheses, this number plus this number divided by 2. Oops, I can't type. I think I might as well quit. Divided by 2. Oh my gosh, we got a mean of 31 and a median of 31. What does that tell you about your data? It's pretty good. It's pretty close together. You don't have many outliers. You don't have many unusuals. <laughs> Blowing up the phone. Okay, mode. I really don't care about it, but it, what is it, 40? Is it 18 and 40? So you put 18 comma 40. They both show up the most, and you put both of them. Range is equal to this number minus this number. Mid-range is equal to this number, parentheses, this number, plus parentheses, closed, divided by 2. X minus X bar. X minus X bar. <coughs> We'll have to get you off those Marlboro Reds, girl. Equals this number raised to the, I have no idea who that was. So, second power. Get you off them camels, no filter camels. <laughs> That's some hardcore stuff right there. I ain't kidding you. <laughs> Sorry. No, I've never... 
There's three things in life that I've never had, never done, never had a taste for and never done. One is smoking cigars and cigarettes and pipes and stuff like that. Two is beef liver. Never, don't, I've tried, I've tried that and I just don't like it. And three, never had a inkling to do drugs. Never had that. I'm very blessed not to have those. So some people have to deal with addictions. I don't have to deal with that. The only thing I have to deal with is daggum cheeseburgers and french fries. That's my addiction. That's, ooh, that's one of my addictions. Some people have like sweet tooths. You know, they eat ice cream and stuff like that. Mine's cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers, pizza, french fries. I could eat a five-gallon bucket of french fries. I mean, that's mm, that's my weakness. I don't eat them no more, but... Anymore. Don't even know no, anymore. I don't they mean the same thing. Huh? They mean the same thing. Yeah, they mean the same thing. Like ain't gotten there. So yeah, but those never had that. And I'm very blessed. In fact, I really don't have I don't have any of those I don't have an addictive personality. I'm addicted to horror movies. I like horror movies can't get enough of those you have to watch them over and over and over because once you it's kind of like the outliers and the unusual once you watch so many horror movies you have to go to the stupid and the cheap and the hum they call them horror comedies i i uh -uh. you can't man that's like putting oil and water in a glass comedy and horror do not mix those are stupid movies Stupid. No, nobody likes it. Everybody should like it's all about me. Okay. What'd you say? There you go. There you go. Now you got it. It's a joke. Okay, I'm kidding. What? What about scary movies? One, two, three. I never did get into those. They're bad. No, never did get into them. Now the only kind of comedy I like in a horror movie is like when Michael Myers does something funny, like turn his head like this or. You know, that very, very slight, but Michael Myers telling a joke, no, that's not that's not funny. It takes away from the horror and the scariness. Michael Myers in the Rob Zombie movies is terrifying. I love Rob Zombie Oh, God, I love Rob Zombie oh. Halloween. I love that one. Okay, I'll shut up because some of y'all are giving me that I don't care look. All right, so here is equals this number divided by... What's 12 minus 1? God did that for you. All right. And take that and raise it to the what power? 0.5. Y'all are listening. Thank you. Surprise, surprise. I'm very happy with y'all. And see, I, I did all of this. I, did y'all see a while ago I did the whole screen to five digits? And what did this do? It's the Russians. It is the Russians. So I'll go back and do it again. Format sales number. All right, who's got questions on that? Now you can do your, I'm not going to do the curve. I'm focusing on the five number summary now. So look at there. I, that, that automatically got put there. Isn't that nice? So I'm going to highlight that also green for day. So now I've got to find. All right. Now this is the most important part. Where did she go? Okay. She's not allowed to go anywhere. All right. None of y'all are allowed to go anywhere, especially right now, because I'm going to go over a very important part. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to sit here and wait. Well, she didn't want to be in your seat. No, don't be talking about that. that that's not good. <laughs> Peeing in the seat is not a good thing. We're going to wait. Anybody got anything you want to talk about? Any problems? Addictions? I can help. If you tell me you're addicted to something, I can help. Tell me. What do you... Okay, we'll quit eating. Okay. There, that's all there is to it. That is the that is the diagnosis of a non-addictive personality to somebody who's addicted. Quit doing it. Okay, when the loser gets back. Okay, there she is. All right, now I'm going over this part. She's tough. She can handle it. All right, watch where I put the dot. I'm looking for the middle. Okay, what is the middle? I'm going to take my red dot 
and I'm going to put it in the middle. There it is. See that little red dot? You can't see it. I'll make it short bus size. Hold on. I rode the short bus for two weeks. I can make fun of it. Dang old mama come up there and raised all kind of hell. Let's see. They even had me seeing this dolphin called Do So. Come out, Do So, come out again. So they thought something was wrong with me. They told me to quit seeing Do So too. Mama told him, told him he don't need to see no dolphin. I was telling my mama about Do So's dolphin, and she was like, "Why are you watching a dolphin in the second grade?" I said, "Oh, I'm not in the classroom. They sent me up to the guidance counselor." And my my mama went, "Why?" I don't know. Boy, she lit in them like white on rice. White on rice. Is that okay? White rice. Is, is oh, rice? Wow. Is, is, is right. Oh, is that it? <laughs> it can be brown rice. Brown rice is better and healthier. White rice tastes so much better. No, it doesn't. Wow. Wow. That's just what you can You know say. what? That's just what a white privileged person would say. Uh, this protein that I'm drinking, guess what it's made from? Brown rice. brown rice and yellow peas. Rice like it doesn't if you fix it right. Okay, let me tell you something. That's why we have salt and pepper and butter. If you want to make something taste better, you put those three things in it. Wait, did you actually homemade blend that together? What is it? What, what was it? I love how she comes into the back of a conversation <laughs> and says, so do what? That. After she's talking and playing the phone. Okay. The protein that I put in here is made from brown rice and yellow peas. It is not soy and not whey. It is right. non, it is vegan, vegan. Did vegan. you actually like do that yourself or was it already in powder form? You powder form. No, I didn't make it. I didn't, you know, I didn't dilute it from brown rice and uh, I don't raise yellow peas and brown rice. No. You never know. No, I don't No, I'm not a tree hugger. No, no, well, I don't you do have all that. Farm, so you know, I raise pigs, cows. And I got some horses, and I got hay. That's it. Do you have some like pet pigs? No. Do you don't make pets pigs? out of animals that you're going to slaughter. That's true. Never name them. Yeah. I mean, I. I, I know some people that have like the smallest pigs, and they're adorable, and they're nice, and not. And you can eat them. That's what people in Venezuela do. They yeah, eat their pets. If we were pets. in Asia, we'd be eating dogs and cats. So it's just. If you live in Venezuela, you'd be eating zebras. No, that I would like eat a human before I eat a zoo animal. I'm sorry. But I would not use it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to practice no cannibalism no time soon. I'm sorry. Did you see there was a story somewhere where um, they spray painted a donkey white with the stripes <laughs> and were selling pictures with it? What, like zebras? Was that the Greenville Zoo? Where was no. That? that sounds like Greenville Zoo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meth head. You know they quit doing Greenville in, uh, on live PD? You know why? Because it was everything was meth heads, everything. Yeah. And they they didn't have, so they left Greenville. They went down to Richland County instead, or they stayed in Richland County. They won't do Greenville anymore because everybody was meth heads. What? One of my cousin's friends was on it. Was it? Was he a meth head or no? He was a policeman. Yeah. It's kind of funny though when they did the Greenville one, people were like, oh, I've been there. Oh. Yeah, meth head. <laughs> meth head. You're associated with meth heads now. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, shut up, you. All right, so what is the middle? The middle, how many numbers? Now, this is where it gets, this is where you have to listen. How many numbers are above that red dot? Let's count. Let's take my handy dandy <laughs> highlighter. Let's look. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. What is six? Odd or even? So you got to take the middle two numbers and you got to highlight them because we've got to use what? We got to use the average. Why can't I highlight? Why is it not highlighting? Try that again. Highlight these two numbers. There we go. And I'm going to highlight them this color. It's pronounced two different ways. Of course, it's pronounced the incorrect way and the correct way. Yellow. There you go. That's the correct way. All right. So it goes, well, no, Hubert, that is not the correct way. It's pronounced yellow. Shut up. Can't stand those people. All right. That goes right here. And what is that? Let me highlight that yellow. 
yellow and put equals parentheses this number plus this number divided by two. Let me just go ahead and say I've got several degrees. I know that the average of 18 and 20 is 19. I know that, okay, but I'm not teaching to the person that knows it. I'm teaching to the person that doesn't know it. So that's why I put the formula in. I have to explain that because we have people that don't realize that I'm trying to teach, not already know the material. Okay? What? Thank you, what? All right. Here's those two. And I'm going to pick a color. Not that color. That's a nasty color. Let's go with blue. And even though I know that the answer is 40, I'm going to go ahead and put the formula in. Because those numbers may do what? What could they do? Change. Yep, that's right, class. Change. They could change. Into two numbers. Thank you for the interaction. Into two numbers that you don't know the what? The answer to. So you have to put them in the formula. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and color this one gray because it's pretty basic. Nobody in here is gray, are they? Because I don't want anybody to be offended with me saying basic and gray. This is no joke. I call myself the black sheep of my family. I said that in a class one time, and do you know I had two people come up to me after class and said they were offended? No. This really happened, okay, because I had to tell my department head right afterwards because I know she's going to get a date. She got an email saying that I referred to the black sheep as the negative color. What do you call a sheep that is not white? The black sheep are just the different. Like, I'm a black sheep in my family. That just means like the outcast. It's the one the that outlier. I know that. Y'all not listening to me. Okay, y'all not listening to me. Forget that. That's garbage. I'm not. But what do you call a white sheep that is not, I mean, a sheep that is not white? They only come in two or three colors. Okay? So I can't call a red sheep a red sheep because I'll be offending redheads. Thank you. Redheads. I'll be offending redheads. We're all human, it doesn't matter. Anyway. My whole point is, where does it stop? Um, black yeah. hole. Can we not call a black hole a black hole? Because it's, it's black hole because it's void of what? Energy. It's void of matter. So is that offensive? Calling a black hole a black hole? Some people might find it that way. Depends on the sentence. I'm offended because white sheep is straight and narrow, and I don't like that because I don't perform that way. I'm offended. I just think people have gone stock raving crazy is what I think. All right, so I'll shut up. I thought nothing offended you. I was kidding. Don't take me literally. If you take me literally, then we'll all be in trouble. Yeah, do not take Hubert literally. All right, how about this one? We'll color this one. Anybody want to pick a color that will offend somebody? Purple. Okay, we'll go with a light purple because I can't, I can't see the... Let's see, how about a... Rainbow. Rainbow. Like there we go. Fuchsia. Yep, that's more like a fuchsia. All right, y'all good? There's five number summary. Now I want you to draw a box plot. Do it by hand. Go. Get to it. If you can't do it, just consider it a, fail, a failure and a disappointment. And you're offended. So go live in a van down by the river. Oh my God. I live in a van down by the river. I was very self-sufficient. Some people have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? No. Nope. Not a clue. You know, one day, what we're going to do, we're going to come in here, and I'm going to put a list of classics, okay? Classic uh, skits, classic movies, classic, and we're going to put it in, and we're going to watch a little bit of each one of them. Because somewhere, y'all's parents have dropped the ball. <laughs> my mom dropped me. My, uh, my, my 11-year-old was sitting in class the other day, and, and, and uh the teacher was playing music on one of her presentations, and it was uh, Leonard Skinner, 
yes. Sweet Home Alabama, and and uh, started playing. And before the fifth note, bow, 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 you know, before the fifth note, my son goes, "Hey, Miss Sutton, that's Sweet Home Alabama." And she, he was the only one in the class that knew what the heck she was talking about. That is sad, and I'll tell you why. Sweet Home Alabama is pretty much the song of the South, okay? I don't know of any song that goes with the South better than Sweet Home Alabama. You know, Sweet Home Alabama was written in a shack beside a creek. Did you know that? It was, it was written by or recorded? Written at, I'm sorry, written at. Okay. And one guy, the guy that wrote all the lyrics to it was actually fishing, after they and, and they started with they started that and they while they were writing the song while they were writing the music in the shack the guy that wrote the lyrics took those few few lyrics this was so amazing to me about music and artists he took those few bars whatever you want to call them and he went fishing down down on the, down the creek and he wrote the whole song while he was fishing and he only had like five or six notes. It's amazing. To me, that's amazing. I can't, I can't hit a lick at it. I'm, I'm on the I other side. I, I can sing. That's all I can do. But huh? I don't think I heard that song in my high school. But you heard it. Yeah, that is one of those songs that just people say, "Oh, I've never heard of that before." Oh, bull crap! Bull crap! You do not go through it unless you've never watched TV, unless you've never watched a movie. Unless your parents, you don't have there parents. Just that movie with like the general and like the, oh, what's that? The classic movie with general, like the car general? It's not a movie. It's a TV show. Okay, well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, Dukes about. of Hazzard. That is like the number one thing with that song, so we should do it. No, it's not in that movie. It's well, not like in that song. Some of the commercials. The movie, there was no movie of that. They tried to do a movie and it was terrible and nobody yeah, watched it. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, like, kind of put that song with that. Yeah, kind of with that thing. car, yeah. Now, you're a racist because you remember that car. And if you remember that car, it's got a Confederate flag, so that means you're a racist. Man, these redneck Yeah. All right. So, let's go with the number line. What's the number line? Somebody tell me the number line. Uh, 17 to 45. 17. You put that right there. Do not put error in the number line. Why? Because you do not have any numbers below 17. Your universe is between 17 and 45 because that's the only numbers you have. So 45 you put. Then the reason is if you ever have a smart alecky teacher and you do that on a T-Rex test that you take in class, they will mark it wrong because it has arrows on it. You can't do that with these numbers. All right, the middle plus seven is mid range is what, 31? Now, I'm not, these are all odd numbers, so I'm not going to do the decimals because you're sketching a box plot, so it really doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm going to go 18 to 30 or 17 to 30 or 18. I'm going to do 18 to 30. 18 to 30 is what? 12? Right? Half of 12 is 6, so I'm going to put 23 right here. And 30 what? 37 right there, and then you can do half, what's 7 to 5, what's 7 to 15, 8, half of 8 is what, 4, so that's 41, 4 is 30, what, 5, 4, here is 27, and 4 here is what, 21, so there's my graduations, and you can do decimals if you want to, I just don't because I don't feel like doing it up here or trying to do it in my head. Is it a huge deal on what numbers we have in there? Like, I mean, other than you like can the do, you need to have at least four or five. <laughs> yeah, you got to have four or five because you got to have somewhere to plot. Yeah. If you don't have, if you don't, if you just have seventeen and forty-five and thirty-one, you don't have enough to plot unless you're just a good guesser. Yeah. So that's why you got to put the graduations. Number line done. I would say at least a minimum of five or six. You have to have a minimum. But if these numbers are 17 and this number is 107, then you're going to have to put more because it's a bigger span. All right, so the number line is done. And here is our box plot. I'm not going to do the colors because it takes time. So 19, 19 is going to be 
Well, if I did 17 to 21, that's 3, so 19 is going to be right in the middle here. So there's 19. And then 40 is going to be right here. And then the middle is what? Oh, my gosh. It's on 31. So what does that mean about our data? It looks like a what? It looks like a normal curve. Because the median lines up with the what? The middle or the mid-range. And if they line up pretty synchronously, then that means that you pretty much have a normal curve. Or your data is pretty decent. There's no unusuals. There's no outliers. Okay? Okay, y'all are having fits, so that means we need to quit. All right, that means we're what? What does that mean? We're finished. So that means y'all do get on the homework this weekend. You send in questions. Monday will be nothing but homework questions and what? <laughs>